Hey guys, Shift838 here. I wanted to take a moment and make a short video of how I'm using Pi Amiga 1.5 and I'm using the light version, so the 32 gigabyte version. I wanted to be able to use Pi Amiga to be able to connect to ANSI uh, supported bulletin board systems across Telnet using the actual term program as I wanted a uh, more retro accurate experience. Uh, since BSD sockets library is installed, we have to full Telsur because that's what we will be installing. Um, since Telsur requires AMI TCP and AMI TCP and BSD sockets are both TCP stacks and they would compete against one another. Not something we want as it wouldn't work. So like I said, I've already done the 32 gigabyte image and copied it over to the SD card uh, to save some time. Um, but we will do some uh, manipulating here in just a moment. So once you have the SD card, you will have a kick volume. This is where our kickstart ROMs need to go. So it's pretty simple. Just copy one over and you'll be done. We're going to take the Amiga 1200 ROM and drop it over. And then we will eject the SD card. Uh, as if you don't eject it nicely, sometimes they can uh, corrupt. We will, then if we eject one of the volumes, both of them will, will eject. So let's go ahead and eject. Now we'll remove the SD card from the reader, of course, and put it in my Raspberry Pi 4, which is what I'm utilizing. It's a, it's an eight gigabyte model. Um, just simply because that's what I had. Uh, I know you can run this on a four gigabyte version. I believe it will even run on a Pi 3, although I haven't tried it. So now let's reboot. And I got my monitor focused on the HDMI for the Pi 4. And there's Pi Mega right there. Takes a few seconds for it to completely come up. And there it is. Now, for some reason, the video editing software looks like cut off the screen a little bit. First thing we're going to do is go to AmiNet, and we're going to download Term, which is on page four if you search for Term. And we're going to do 4.8 version. I am going to save that, and I'm going to save it in my work volume. The next thing we're going to download is Telsur. Now Telsur also has a key file if you want to make multiple connections at one time, but for this demonstration, we're only going to download the demo, which is Telsur 140. You can always get the key file later and drop it on there. But for most of us, one connection is all we're going to be doing. So we're going to save this to our work volume as well. You can save them wherever you want, but this is where I chose to do it. Exit. So let's go expand them. Unpack, whatever you want to call that. So we'll do Telsur first. We're going to unpack that to our work directory. Move this over. As you can tell, it's pretty high resolution on the monitor. We're going to change this to work. Gonna extract all. Just takes a second or so. Now we're going to go ahead and open term and do the same thing. It's already going to go to work because we already selected it. Extract all. 
That takes a few more seconds. It's a little larger. There we go. I can go ahead and close all this out. Go into our system. This is where we're going to create a new folder drawer, a new drawer called AMI-TCP. This is what's going to fake Telser out thinking AMI-TCP is installed because that's what we will be selecting when we install Telser. So AMI-TCP, remember how you type it. It's just an empty folder drawer is all it is. Next, you want to open up a shell command, move this over. We need to edit our user startup file. So we do a ed space s colon user dash startup. And we want to find the last assign command. As you see, I don't have that many really. I'll insert a new line to a assign colon or assign space, sorry. AMITCP colon system colon AMITCP. This will assign that, that drawer as an alias. So close it, save it. Now we need to reboot to take an effect. F12, select restart. Then we got to press F12 again and it will restart. Here it comes up. And you see it doesn't take too long to boot back in. So no errors, that means our assigned statement's working. So the next thing we need to do is go back into work and we need to install Telser. So we're gonna do this, the uh, Telser install. We're gonna install for real, proceed, proceed, ensure AMI TCP is selected, proceed, ensure all the defaults are selected, proceed, and that's all we're going to do is continually proceed with the defaults until it's done. Now that's installed. So close this out. We'll go ahead and launch term. First thing we're going to do is configure the screen so that way you can actually see it better. The high resolution, as you notice, is pretty high for the video. It's kind of hard to see. Um, that's why I was telling you what I'm doing. So we're going to go and set up. We're going to go to screen. The display mode is fairly high. That one's set at 1920 by 1080. We don't really want that. We're going to go ahead and set it up to 640 by 400. And it's the UAE version, 16-bit uh, PC. This way you'll be able to see it more. I'm going to go ahead and change this font to Topaz. Just simply that's what I like. You can keep it to whatever you want. Um, there is a couple of fonts that you cannot change if you're going to be um, connecting to places that have IBM graphics. So we want Windows border, we want simple refresh. I take the time cost off and just put online time. Color, 16 colors for EGA, and there it is. So if it'll focus, there you go, it's better. Now we're going to terminal. Here's a key, BBS ANSI compliant, check that. And I'm going to change mine back to Topaz again for this side. These are where you don't want to change it. The IBM PC font needs to stay IBM. The font other where IBM PC style, that needs to stay. Otherwise, you won't see IBM graphics at all. It'll just be a mess. Use. Now, it looks good. 
So we're going to go back to settings again, and we're going to go to emulation. We still need to select this BBS ANSI compliant for emulation. That's all you need to do. Click use. Now we need to go to serial. This is where we can change it. Now I changed mine to 115, 200. Um, I know it works, just leave it at 19, 2 as well. Um, so whatever you want to do. Device, this is where the Telsur comes in. We need to drop that to Telsur.device. Save. Always remember to save. If you have to reboot, it's just F12 restart if you didn't save. Okay, let's see if we can get this to focus. There we go. Now you can change this to the actual, I think it's 700 by, or 720 by 400, 16 bit. Uh, if you change it to that, then you'll be able to usually, it gives you a few extra columns. So if the ANSI screens are a little bigger, it'll work. Otherwise, I mean, you don't have to. Uh, it's completely up to you. And click use. We'll go ahead and expand this down a little bit more. Now, if we issue an AT command, you should be able to see the cursor move. And it needs to see if it'll get in focus here in a minute. Do some adjusting. Okay, maybe I need to switch it back. Camera is just not doesn't like it real well. So let's let's just switch it back to the other screen. The 640 by 480. And that'll work for this demo. So, as you see, Telsur is responding as a modem. So let's make a connection over to fusionbvs.ddnsnet, comma, 9640. That's my bulletin board. It's always BBS name, comma, port. Now, here's ANSI. And as you can see, it's, it's quick. Doesn't really take that long. And there it is. So that's pretty much about it. So please feel free to comment. I would appreciate it. And the hang up also works. Thank you.